As California's first partner, Jennifer Siebel Newsom may seem like she has it all, but her life has been filled with tragedy. From the accidental death of a loved one to a heartbreaking medical diagnosis, the former actor is no stranger to pain and loss. Long before she was California's first partner and a successful documentary filmmaker, Jennifer Siebel Newsom was an aspiring actor. Her big-screen dreams first put her in contact with Harvey Weinstein in September 2005, and she later became one of nearly 90 women who accused the magnate of sexual assault. During Weinstein's Los Angeles criminal trial in 2022, Siebel Newsom took the stand and recalled meeting him at the Toronto International Film Festival. It was there that he reportedly approached her. She said in her testimony, "...he treated me initially like he was really curious about me. Maybe flattered is how I felt." Later, he invited her to meet at the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills to discuss a possible film role, and she agreed. In a 2017 HuffPost essay, she wrote, "...staff were present and then all of a sudden disappeared like clockwork, leaving me alone with this extremely powerful and intimidating Hollywood legend." In her testimony, Siebel Newsom fought back tears as she claimed that Weinstein took her to bed and sexually assaulted her. She told the jury, "...he was hurting me. I'm crying. I'm trembling. I'm shaking." While Weinstein's defense team argued that the encounter was consensual, Siebel Newsom called it her worst nightmare and shared, "...he was just so big and so determined. This was hell." She has amazing credibility. She's not in it for the money. She's the governor's wife, so a lot of people are going to believe her. By taking the stand against Harvey Weinstein, Siebel Newsom was forced to relive every aspect of their alleged encounter in excruciating detail. Her cross-examination went on for hours, and she later acknowledged to the Los Angeles Times that the experience was horrific. While she cried during her testimony, one of Weinstein's attorneys, Alan Jackson, diminished her emotions, stating, "...what you saw was an act." He also accused her of having transactional sex with Weinstein to further her acting career, claiming, "...she knows it and she hates it." Another of Weinstein's lawyers, Mark Worksman, even went as far as to tell the court that Siebel Newsom joined the Me Too movement to, quote, make herself a very prominent victim. He then added, otherwise, she'd be just another bimbo who slept with Harvey Weinstein to get ahead in Hollywood. As for why Siebel Newsom accepted Weinstein's invitation to meet in a hotel room, she explained in her 2017 HuffPost essay, I was naive, new to the industry, and didn't know how to deal with his aggressive advances. In addition to the alleged assault, Siebel Newsom was also questioned at length about the professional emails she continued to send to Weinstein, which she said she mostly didn't recall. In the end, the jury was hung on her allegations and failed to find Weinstein guilty of the alleged 2005 incident. Siebel Newsom later told the Los Angeles Times, "...I didn't realize how much sexism and misogyny still exists in our culture. I was shocked by that." I am outraged. Jennifer Siebel Newsom experienced a devastating tragedy just days prior to her seventh birthday. As she recounted to the Los Angeles Times in June 2023, she and her eight-year-old sister, Stacy, were playing with some other children on golf carts while on vacation in Hawaii. Siebel Newsom got into a golf cart, which started to reverse, but she was unaware that her older sister was hiding behind it. Sadly, Stacy died, leaving Siebel Newsom with an incredible amount of guilt. She told the outlet, "...I felt the pressure to be perfect, to make my parents forget, by being two daughters instead of one." Rather than working through her heartbreak, she forced herself to excel in every possible area, from school to extracurricular activities. Siebel Newsom added to the Los Angeles Times that she was sure she experienced a bit of survivor's guilt. Survivor's guilt often comes with a long list of symptoms similar to PTSD, including constantly replaying the incident, difficulty sleeping, and even suicidal thoughts. It can take years to work through. As Siebel Newsom told the Los Angeles Times, she didn't start coming to terms with the accident until decades later, when her youngest child, Dutch Newsom, turned six in 2022. She explained, "...I realized that I'm really hard on myself. I realized that you can't blame a six or seven-year-old. You can't ask them to understand things." As California's first partner, Jennifer Siebel Newsom is committed to promoting initiatives that support youth mental health. She played a key role in the Farm to School Grant Program, strongly supported California for All Kids, initiated the California State Parks Adventure Pass, and advocated for the $4.7 billion Master Plan for Kids' Mental Health in 2022. Her goal is to equip children with the tools they need to be happy and healthy, including better nutrition, less screen time, and increased physical activity. As she told the Los Angeles Times, her drive stems from her own painful childhood experience. Siebel Newsom told the outlet, "...I'm sure, in my subconscious, it's like I have to make up for that loss, and I have to do something to improve other people's lives or have an impact. 
Indeed, as Siebel Newsom told EdSource in 2022, she first recognized the importance of mental health resources after her sister's death. She recalled to the outlet, I think we went to therapy once after my sister died. And then it was like, move on, everything's fine. We're just going to pretend like nothing happened. Elaborating on her personal connection to the cause, she explained to Inside the Issues in 2023, I found myself looking for support and ways to heal my own anxiety and sadness and pain and hopelessness. Ultimately, she found solace in being outdoors. And nature healed me. Animals healed me. Now, she's striving to offer that to the next generation. Jennifer Siebel Newsom has used a health scare in 2023 as an opportunity to inspire and educate others, just as she has done with her other harrowing experiences. In March, she posted a candid video on Instagram that showed a long scar running from her nostril down to her upper lip. She explained that she underwent Mo surgery, a procedure used to treat skin cancer. According to Mayo Clinic, Mo surgery involves cutting thin layers of skin from the affected area and examining each one until the surgeon is certain that all of the cancer has been removed. It turns out this was actually Siebel Newsom's second time having the same procedure, as she previously had it under her eye. She told her followers that she had made a mistake when she noticed a small spot above her lip and put off asking her doctor about it for too long. She also underscored the importance of using sunscreen and wearing a hat, writing in the caption, a little reminder to young folks that we are not invincible and we should never put our health, especially preventative care, on the back burner. Jennifer Siebel Newsom pivoted hard in the early 2000s after rediscovering her passion for acting. She told the Stanford Daily in 2015, Stanford Business School actually, ironically, propelled me into the entertainment industry. Before completing her MBA, she was working on a bachelor's degree in Latin American studies and playing soccer when she injured her back. As a result, she had to find a new pastime. Siebel Newsom later returned to this interest in acting when pursuing her master's, so she gave it another go. Siebel Newsom fell in love with the art form and eventually decided to pursue a career in Hollywood. She landed her first small TV roles in 2002, including four episodes of a series called Presidio Med. After that came bit parts in films like Something's Gotta Give and Rent, but her career never really took off. As she told Politico in 2018, trying to make it as an actor at 28, which she called old by Hollywood standards, wasn't easy. She told the outlet, I was typecast as a trophy wife and kind of put into this box that was really hard to break out of. Siebel Newsom's last on-screen role came in 2017, but her acting career really slowed down after 2010. By this time, she had pivoted again, this time to documentary work. Inspired by her own experiences in Hollywood and the lack of female representation in the industry, she wrote, directed, and produced her first documentary, Misrepresentation. The film debuted in 2011 at the Sundance Film Festival. Since then, she has released three more documentaries, including 2022's Fair Play, which explores how women struggle to balance family, work, and pleasure. I love celebrating women and telling stories that celebrate women. Being a politician comes with guaranteed criticism, but being a politician's partner isn't any easier. Living in the spotlight means undergoing constant scrutiny for Siebel Newsom, and she often has to defend both herself and her husband. In August 2020, for example, she faced heavy criticism when she released a PSA telling California mothers it was in their power to help ensure everyone followed mask mandates. Siebel Newsom tweeted, It's time to use our mom's superpower to get our kids back in school. Unfortunately, many moms were not impressed by that sentiment and argued that the PSA put too much of the burden on them. Siebel Newsom clapped back through spokesperson Hannah Milgram, who told Politico that the ad was actually supposed to praise mothers. She then added, Jennifer's life's work has been about disrupting limiting gender stereotypes. Siebel Newsom was similarly berated when she tweeted about running out of toilet paper in 2020 and was ridiculed by folks who argued she was privileged and had no right to complain. However, it's not just her actions that are constantly being scrutinized. California's first partner has also had to listen to critics slam her husband. In November 2021, she finally had enough when Governor Gavin Newsom was questioned for suddenly pulling out of the United Nations Climate Change Conference. In a since-deleted tweet, she shut down her husband's critics by writing, Please stop hating and get a life. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673.